Ura is kicked out of Jung Wook's hotel room, causing her to move into Jung Wook's house. Tasia is ready to take in Yura but only after conducting a DNA test to check if it's their blood or not. To Yura's fear the baby turns out to be Sehyuk's leaving her with no option but Sehyuk. Yura walks into Sehyuk's house only to find him getting ready to marry another woman. After successfully chasing his fiancée out of his house, by revealing him as the father of her baby, she mocks him for moving on. While Sehyuk suspects the baby being his, Yura sits on his head wanting to live with him and make rest of his life miserable. Jung Wook finally gets what he deserved, to be in jail, where he blames his father for everything he did, expressing his resentment on his father, for abandoning his mother and happily moving on making a new family. Little did he know that, it's not his father, but his mother who abandoned them for another man, proving which there is a letter left by her, making Jung Wook regret everything he did. Jung Hai isn't pleased with the idea of Yura living with Se Hyuk, and provokes her into revenging on Yiju, only to get disowned by her because of her turning penniless. Karma hit everyone hard, Yura and Se Hyuk, who made Yiju live in a loveless marriage are now going to live the same life. Jung Wook, who wanted to snatch everything from Sadu Guk is in jail, left with nothing. Jung Hai, who ruined many people's lives and separated them from their beloved ones, is now abandoned by her one and only daughter Yura. Perfect marriage revenge stayed true to its name and ruined every sinner of Yiju and so do Gook with their marriage. Did you enjoy watching Perfect Marriage Revenge? Do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Until then, take care.